Hello, welcome or welcome back to my channel. This is Amanda, otherwise known as the Tangled Skeins Crafter here on YouTube. Um, today I'm going to do another whip and review. I don't know why I'm talking like this. Anyway, I thought today I would talk about and the trees crept in. I'm not sure how to say the author's name. Don Kurtigick, maybe? Um, let me tell you what the book's about. The summary of the book says, Stay away from the woods. When Scylla and Nori arrive at their aunt's home, it's immediately clear that the manor is cursed. The endless creaking of the house at night and the eerie stillness of the woods surrounding them would be enough of a sign. But there are secrets, too. Questions that Scylla can't ignore. Why does it seem that, ever since they arrived, the trees have been creeping closer? Who is the beautiful boy who's appeared from the woods, and who is the tall man with no eyes who Nori plays with in the basement at night? A man no one else can see. So, I went into this book having no idea what it was about, what I was listening to. I just knew it looked creepy. The cover was creepy. Um, I had apparently downloaded it to my tablet at some point and just forgot about it. And whenever I charged, it was my, my Kindle Fire that I haven't used in years because now I use um, a Kindle Paperwhite. So, yeah, I, have, I had no recollection of even downloading this audiobook <laughs> or anything about it. And yes, it's audiobook. Um, I usually just listen to audiobooks while I diamond paint or cross stitch or knit or go about the housework or even when I'm driving. I, I hardly even listen to music lately. And the cat's back. He heard me talking, so he needs to come in and see what's happening. And step all over me. So this book. I don't even know what to say about this book. The genres are horror, young adult, mystery, paranormal, fantasy, thriller, fiction. Um, if you have the print version, like the hardcover, it's 352 pages. I can't remember how long it was. Like I said, I listened to the audiobook. It says it was first published in September of 2016. So, I'll do like I did with my other whip and review, and that I will do the spoiler free review first, and then, you know, I'll, I'll do all the spoilers after a certain time. And I'll put the time on, on the screen where you can skip once I get to that part. Alright, so I'm going to read the review I left on Goodreads. Because this helps remind me of what I want to say. And how I felt about it because it's been a few weeks since I finished this audiobook. This book was like a fever dream. Or maybe like tripping on acid. I've never dropped acid, but I, I've heard it's very, well trippy. I highly recommend listening to the audiobook. There are effects that will creep you out so much that you will want to take a break from the book and get back in touch with reality. At least that's how I felt. The narrator is amazing also. The story itself is a bit difficult to follow at times. Perhaps this is by design. There was a bit of jumping back and forth in time and switching point of view suddenly. I never knew what to expect next in the story. There were a couple of things that I suspected that ended up being cracked, but there were plenty of twists and surprises to keep me listening. It can be hard to read at times. There are some rough subjects that come up, and a couple make my eyes well up. I wasn't expecting to get over emotional. Oh, sorry. I wasn't expecting to get emotional over what I thought was just going to be a creepy tale. I went into this code. I didn't read the summary. I do that a lot and rarely regret it. I didn't regret it with this either. I do feel as though even if I had read a summary, I still wouldn't have had a clue as to what to expect in this book. Alright, so spoiler free. Um, there's two girls that go to stay with a family member in this huge house or mansion maybe out in the middle of the woods somewhere. I don't remember what year it's set in, but it's more of a modern day setting, but the whole time I was listening to it, I kept forgetting that it was modern day. I kept feeling like it was way back, like, 
when everybody walked or rode horses or had carriages, you know, just way back. Like, no electricity kind of time. I don't know what. It's just something about this book. It's like a real, I guess, gothic setting. It's real spooky and dark and creepy without even meaning to be part of the time, I think. I mean, that's the whole tone of the book is creepy, of course, but I feel like some of the elements to it, the story, weren't even meant to be creepy. They were just part of the story, yet still creeped me out. Um, the audiobook is just, if you're going to read it, I would listen to the audiobook if you like audiobooks, because there's, like, just, I can't even explain it. It's just really creepy effects they do, sometimes with, like, two voices at a time. Um, if something happens, they'll say, like, stumble. You know, they'll, like, slow down words and drag them out. I need to get the book to see how it's written. I, I'm assuming that, you know, she writes them. I, I, I'd read a review saying that, you know, the writing was kind of bizarre and it wouldn't have worked in any other book. Um, the character is Scylla, is the older of the two girls. I think she's like maybe 15. And then her little sister is Nori, who's, I think, like eight or something. I, I couldn't tell you exactly the ages, but, you know, there's a there's an age difference. And, of course, it's the bigger sister that takes care of the little sister. And Nori doesn't talk. She's, like, nonverbal. So there's, like, sign language. Um, they're staying with their aunt. And it tells you why they go to stay with the aunt. I won't say why. But, you know, they're just, it's just the two girls show up at their aunt's doorstep. And then they get there, and it's all really nice at first, and their aunt's great. And then things start getting kind of, like, creepy. Like, the aunt tells them, never go out in the woods that surrounds the house, because there's, like, um, oh, I can't remember what they call him. But, you know, there's a creeper man that lives out there. And if you go out there, then... He, he'll get you. He likes, to, I guess, eat little girls. I think is what she tells him. He kills and eats them or something like that. Um, there's a random boy that shows up. Says he used to be an orphan. Because apparently this place used to be an orphanage. And uh, he just wants to work, take care of the garden. And they're all doing okay until, like, the aunt just starts getting kind of a little bit loony. And then the the sister starts noticing stuff. Like, she feels like the trees are creeping in. And, you know, it's called, and the trees crept in. And it just gets really bizarre from there. And just a lot of stuff comes up and a lot of stuff's talked about. It's, it, it just, it goes back and forth and you use you see stuff or hear stuff or read stuff depending on you know that happened before they came to stay with their aunt and then you know it'll it goes back in time to like when I guess the aunt was a little girl and her her and her sisters lived there and played out in the woods and stuff and um it comes back you know to present day and it'll, it'll change perspectives like it'll be the nori talking and then it'll be Scylla again and everyone's well it's the aunt talking and and usually you can tell who's talking by the voice. The narrator does a really good job. Um, I'm trying to think of not spoilery things to say. I'm just going to leave it with my non-spoiler part. Is that I recommend the book. Um, I gave it a 5 star rating. I was going to get a, give it a 4 because it, it was a little weird with it jumping back and forth but it just it, it's one of those books that stays with you it's creepy so i know i've said creepy a lot of times but it really is creepy it's such a creepy book and like i it took me days to read it because it just it would creep me out so much i would just stop listening to it for a while and do something else or listen to something a little happier watch some youtube you know just something that wasn't that book and i always listen to it late at night when i'm all by myself doing some diamond painting or something I mean, I think that's what I was listening to on half the ones I recorded. Like the time lapse and stuff. Because it just kind of fit the mood too. It's Halloween and creepy book. Alright, so I'm going to start with the spoilery bits now. And I will put the time on the video. 
where you can jump forward to where I stopped talking about all the spoilers. All right, so in the trees crept in is about these two girls who are from an abusive home and they go to their aunt's house because the mom says it will be safe there is what the, you know um, Scylla tells the aunt and the aunt's kind of surprised by that but you know it doesn't show why at first um, and Scylla is under the impression that there might be a war that's going to break out like World War Four, I think she said and uh, I think she's from London and she you know she needed to get out of the city because you know they couldn't be in the city when the war broke out she ends up her and her sister end up living with their aunt I think it's three years I think she's 18 or 19 towards the end of the book and um, while they're there the aunt you know starts out really nice really sweet they have a lot of food they never have to go into town or anything there's all kind of food it's a huge house huge like mansion manor is what it says ow cat stop um the cat's attacking me for no reason they have a garden you know they get vegetables and stuff out of there i don't know where they get meat and stuff but i just know that they have a lot of stuff there and then slowly they start getting lower and lower on food and the aunt tells them they can't leave the house they can't go through the woods and the woods surrounds the house they can't go through the woods because this this man this monster is going to get them if they do um and you know so it's like well we came through the woods to get to your house she goes yeah now he's seen you and now he knows so you know you have to you have to hide from him. you can't go out in the woods or or he'll find you well the aunt starts just getting more and more insane basically and until she finally just goes upstairs and locks herself in the attic or upstairs one of the upper floors but Scylla can hear her every night just walking back and forth across the floor you know creak 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 so now it's just her and her sister and they're running out of food and she's working in the garden but hardly anything's growing and she starts noticing roots are coming up in the garden roots from the trees that were you know all the way across the, the lawn from the garden and she's trying to I guess they don't have anything to plant and she's trying to make stuff last you know kind of like making soup out of potatoes and water and that's it kind of thing and uh, the little girl's always hungry and uh oh the little girl okay so the little sister Nori that she just makes me so sad she has a a, a, an arm that's all like twisted and bent and she can't use it and Scylla tells the aunt when they get there that you know she was born that way but that is not what happened it was because of that abusive home and it was like a broken shoulder or collarbone or something that healed wrong because they never went to the hospital so she can't use one of her arms and she doesn't speak and she you know uses sign language and and Scylla keeps a close eye on her because you know she can't speak she can't yell for help if anything happens so she doesn't like her out of her sight and and nori wants to play out in the woods and she's not allowed to and when it like cuts to nori's scenes sometimes nori's talking about the man with no eyes playing games with her and that's it's creepy because you know no one else sees this man which is in the summary you know who's the tall man with no eyes he's really tall and he has no eyes and uh There's parts of the book that talks about like the aunt and her sisters making um, a protector out of like straw and, and burlap and you know whenever they sewed this like little doll effigy is that the word you know they took it out in the woods and oh, they did like a little spell basically and then at the end they realized that he had no eyes they forgot to add eyes so apparently he's the one that came to life and the aunt is now convinced that he's not a protector he, he murders little girls and eats them so we got the two girls living there with their aunt but they never see their aunt um Scylla takes food up and leaves it in front of the door but she doesn't know if her aunt actually eats or not 
she never sees her, she never talks to her, all she can he hear is her walking back and forth at night while she tries to sleep. You know, creak, 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 the floor just creaking with her, her aunt walking back and forth. And this boy shows up, and, uh, you know, she didn't trust him at first. And, you know, he wants to help with the gardens, and, you know, he helps her with the gardens every day. And uh, the little girl really likes him and likes to play with him. He'll play with her, pay attention to her. But Scylla doesn't trust him. And, of course, you know, it's one of those books where she slowly, find, you know, realizes she's, like, in love with him. And he's in love with her. But, you know, they can't have a relationship because he, he needs her to leave. And she won't leave. And she said the woods are too dangerous and she can't take Nori through them. And he really, he asks her repeatedly to go with him. And she asked, she'd asked him when he first showed up where he's from. And he said he lived in a little, like, house outside the village. And she's like, but there's nobody in the village. And you find out that she tried to leave once whenever they were starting to run out of food. And she tried to go through the forest. And she comes to, like, this village that looks like it's been empty forever. And uh, it's abandoned. And then she starts seeing, like, bodies of the, all the pets from the village, like, in the swampy areas and... And then something starts chasing her. I don't know. She just barely makes it back, I guess. So that's why she's convinced she can't leave. And then she starts hearing things. And she starts seeing things. And I'll stop going in so much detail. Or I'm going to tell you the whole book. But um, I'm going to skip forward. Like the, the house starts sinking into the dirt. The trees get closer and closer. A big hole forms in the, the floor. She hears her dad voice coming through um through flashbacks you find out that um the night that her and her i hope y'all want these like super spoilers um the night her and her sister left her her mom had to keep their dad from there was like three or four different versions of the story so i'm assuming the real one is that as they were leaving the dad had woke up from a drunken and he was passed out drunk and the mom was going to go with them but um she had a fight with him so the girls could get get away and um Scylla held Nori's face again she was carrying her she might be more like six or something I, all I know is she's tiny but uh Scylla was holding her face against her chest so she couldn't see what was happening and the dad had the mom down like I think the mom hit the dad with a hammer or something the dad had her down choking her and you know how a face looks when it's getting choked if you've ever watched any kind of movie murder kind of show the eyeballs oh it's just anyway she watches her dad kill her mom and, and her mom was like mouth help me to her and she couldn't help her she was too scared to move and finally you know i guess her and she just took her little sister and ran and left so she witnessed you know her dad kill her mom and she felt guilty she felt like a murderer herself because she didn't help her mom it was really sad and then <laughs> the boy leaves and when he comes back she doesn't trust him anymore because he left her there and i don't know how long he was gone but he try he convinces her she really needs to leave but by the time she finally makes up her mind that she should leave that the trees have totally surrounded the house like up against the doors and windows and she, you can't get through and he tries to like use an axe to cut his way through the trees at the window so they can get out but he can't do it the, but he, he gets too tired and his hands are all bloody and the trees just grow back overnight and then nori disappears and it's just and Scylla and him finally get out of the house through some tunnel and they go in the woods to look for her, and they find a cave and then everything gets really trippy and I it, like she's going back in time and seeing what happened with her aunt and, and she blames her aunt for everything and, it, that happened and even though her aunt supposedly had blamed her for what happened and it's just this huge thing and it just kept going round and round to the point where you don't know what's true and what's not and at the very end are you ready for this i kind of wondered she finds her little sister's you know like body bones laying in the middle of that cave but then she comes to realize that her sister's been dead for a long time and so is she 
this was like her purgatory and she has done this because the guy the boy that she was in love with he actually had left she died her little sister died from starvation or no from some illness and then she died from starvation because she would not leave her sister's body even though her sister's body started like decaying and liquefying and stuff so when he got back to the house they were dead and the creaking at night when her aunt's walking back and forth is actually her aunt's body hanging in the attic because her aunt had went up and hung herself and the the boy he was traumatized he left never got married never had family grew old and died of old age and then came back his i guess spirit or his ghost came back and found her there and she'd been there for 75 years reliving this she died over and over and over i guess not realizing that she was going through the same thing over and over and something about just last time you know she finally realized and it was because she couldn't forgive herself and then you know at the end it's like kind of one of those kind of bittersweet endings because everybody's dead and you know she sees nori again and nori it's all better and talking and her and the aunt skipping off to some mountains in the distance and her and the boys like let's go try again and i guess they i don't know maybe they're reborn it's what kind of confusing ending but even with the confusing ending and even with the like oh really she was dead this whole time i still recommend it and I'm sorry this was so rambling and I hope whatever I'm doing because I'm recording the audio separate because I wanted to record it while it was still halfway fresh in my mind. It had been a few weeks since I've read it but I still wanted to record it now instead of another few weeks and then totally forget about it. Go read it. And the trees crept in. Don Kurtigich. Kurtigich. I'm not sure how to say it. It has a 3.57 rating all right so that is <laughs> my review slash discussion slash re retelling of and the trees crept in <laughs> for everybody that skipped to the spoilery spoiler bits so that i don't know if i'm going to add more to this it depends on what i'm doing if i need to add more time if not then i'll cut it off here i just want to say if you have any books you want me to like read and, and review like hey i want i kind of wonder what this is about but i don't want to actually read it myself let me know especially if it has anything creepy or horror or murder or whodunit or i mean i, I read everything honestly this not non-fiction i don't particularly like non-fiction i'll read some like autobiographies and stuff but creepy or weird supernatural stuff like that let me know if you have any recommendations let me know if you want to read any of my reviews um i have quite a few on goodreads nowhere near as many books as i've actually read because half time i just don't take time to review them but i have um reviews on audible reviews on goodreads reviews on amazon well no they took my reviews down off amazon um scribd i can't remember if i actually reviewed anything on scribd but yes Thank you so much for, for listening here. Yeah, thank you so much for watching. For listening to me ramble on and on and on about this book. I'm not even sure how long it's been now. But yeah, it's a good amount of time. I really think that if you like creepy books that you'll like this one. Even though it's a little confusing. And like I said before, if you get the chance, if you don't mind audiobooks, listen to the audiobook. It's so good. They did it so well. And I'm not sure who was the narrator but I'll find out and I'll put it on the screen. She did a really good job. All right, so thanks again. Please like and subscribe. Maybe consider sharing, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.